Hello and welcome to Billy Ho Sports. It's March Madness time and while we're getting underway for the NCAA tournament and everybody's super excited about that, we are just under two months before the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. It's amazing the journey that we've had so far and now we're really, really getting into the good stuff because it's nothing but big boy prep races worth 100 points to the winner. Today, we're going to preview the Louisiana Derby at Fairgrounds Park. That is next Saturday, March 23rd, setting the stage for a sort of a rematch between Track Phantom and Catching Freedom. Those two ran uh, second and third in the last major prep, the Risen Star. There's a couple other contenders we're going to talk about, some new horses uh, to, that are hitting the trail. So to keep up with all of that Derby news, plus reviewing all of the prep races, just look for my Derby trail list, uh, playlist, and uh, you can find everything you're ever going to want to see right there. Uh, just remember, subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button for me. In the comment section, not only tell me who you like in the Louisiana Derby, maybe some juicy exotic bets, but what do you think about the new Billy Ho Sports uh, t-shirt? I, I recently designed this myself and had it made, and uh, I'm planning on maybe doing some sort of a donation-oriented sale on these shirts. So hit me up if you're interested in getting one. I'm a minimum donation of $15, we'll say. That'll cover shipping in the continental United States. So uh, just to let me know, and we'll uh, get together and work that out. Now, real quick before we get going, the news of this L.A. Derby is Nash opted out once again, as he did in the Risen Star. That just tells me Brad Cox is still trying to get this cult fit to run versus graded stakes competition. He's not there yet. He opted out and ran him on the undercard uh, for uh, the last race, Risen Star, and he got beat pretty handily, I might say, by another pretty good horse. Uh, but we'll take a look at the new ones, and uh, the field has been drawn, so let's get to it. Okay, number one, Triple X Espresso. I keep wanting to say Express, but it's Espresso which is the Ty Pletcher trained colt, is sired by Omaha Beach, recently ran fourth in the Colonel Liam Stakes at Gulfstream, uh, went one mile on the turf. He faced an extremely slow pace. I believe it was 25 opening quarter, 50 half. So he did not uh, present much of a rally in the stretch. But if you go back and you look at this previous maiden win, where he did get the re the reasonable pace of like a 47 second half mile. He closed like a banshee to get the win. So switching over to the dirt, maybe improves, uh, could be running pretty hard down the stretch at a good pace. Uh, Pletcher going with the turf to dirt. Once again, this one is 12 to one morning line and a possible value play. So we will get to the next horse up, number two, Hall of Fame, Steve Asmussen, coming off that seventh place finish in the Risen Star, is sired by Gunrunner Hall of Fame, did break his maiden by a whopping 10 lengths at Fairgrounds. I think people are still hanging on to that because he looks like an underlay at eight to one. Uh, he does seem to like the surface, uh, like his stablemate Track Phantom, but with his front running speed, he just can't, I don't think he can keep up with Track Phantom. I think he fades once again. Uh, I don't think he'll be there. Number three, Antiquarian is a, one of our relatively new shooters on the Derby Trail, is trained by Todd Pletcher, went unraced as a two-year-old, also uh, just recently broke his maiden in his second start at Fairgrounds on a sloppy sealed track. He looked pretty good, showed some speed, uh, but it will be will it be enough to, to uh, challenge Track Phantom? I'm not sure he's 12 to one also, uh, but that, that stretch run, he looked pretty strong putting away the uh, contenders on that sloppy fairgrounds track. It doesn't look like we're going to get rain. I mean, we're going to get rain some sometime next week. This is a kind of a wetter season in New Orleans. 
So that's possible we will get rain, but uh, it would be nothing new for this group of horses. They've seemed to seemingly ran in the slop every time out in these prep races. So uh, keep an eye on the weather. Uh, hopefully we get a fast track. I'd like to see something different. <laughs> anyway, uh, number four is Agate Road. That's Todd Pletcher's other turf to dirt hopeful uh, that's going to give this group a late challenge. Uh, he just missed in his last turf outing at Denia Beach uh, at Gulfstream a little while back. That was the Denia Beach stakes. He was really compromised by a slow pace, but his last effort on the dirt, he was chasing no more time in the Sam F. Davis. And uh, obviously no more time wheeled back and nearly won the Tampa Bay Derby. It was part of that three-way split where he just lost by maybe a neck at most, but looked good. So I, I don't think there was anything wrong with uh, Agate Road not being able to run down no more time in that uh, special uh, Sam F. Davis race that he ran. So I'm looking for more improvement out of Agate Road. I thought that he would go to the Jeff Ruby, but I'm guessing Pletcher feels this has more speed in the race to maybe set up his horse's late rally. Eight to one odds suggest that as well. Uh, but I did think Jeff Ruby was a better spot. I thought the all-weather track and him being a turf to, a turf to dirt type horse, I thought it really set up good for him to take that 100 points in the Jeff Ruby. But I don't know. I, I mean, I'm I'm not definitely going to doubt Todd Pletcher's uh, abilities. So number five is Catching Freedom. Looking for another signature win for his derby resume uh, he did win the Smarty Jones Stakes at Oakland on New Year's Day. That was an impressive effort. But his last race was in this Risen Star where he rattled off the third place finish behind Track Phantom. Uh, but he did have some uh, compromising situations there. He was closing well in the stretch, but he drifted in a little bit. And then he got kind of squeezed tight at the 16th pole by uh, by the, the winner and uh, second place horses. And then he also was hanging on his left lead. If you see him kind of down the stretch, he, he has that kind of left leg, and he looks slightly laboring. Uh, it's really, really hard for me to tell. Unless somebody tells me the left lead, then I can see it. But when I'm watching a live race, I can't just point out and go, oh, he's on his left lead. Uh, but anybody that can do that, more power to him. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to get better and better at that kind of thing. So catching freedom, I think, is the biggest threat. Four to one, second choice. Obviously, everybody thinks so as well. I think with a better stretch run, he can win this one. It's going to be a really, really interesting uh, matchup. Two different styles with track Phantom out on the lead, probably once again, and then tracking him, stalking him uh, just off the pace. We'll be catching freedom and a couple of others that I like. Number six, Awesome Ruta, is another one. Ran sixth in the Rhythm Star for trainer Joe Foster. Chased evenly throughout, but never really made a bid. He's 30 to one. I don't think that's a play for me. Moving on to number seven, Honor Marie. Only beat the previous cult I just talked about by two links in the Rhythm Star, but it was still a pretty good closing effort as he was back at 11th at the three quarter pole and got all the way up uh, just past to fifth place. Wick Bettman hopes Honor Marie can bounce back. And this is going to be his second start off the layoff, going back to that big win at Churchill Downs. Showed some really good form at Church Churchill Downs, so I'm definitely not overlooking this colt down the road at all. Hopefully we see an improvement. Uh, the odds looked pretty juicy. I think 20 to 1 uh, was the morning line. Uh, that brings us to number 8 next level. Morning line 30 to 1, long shot. Returning again, had an awkward break in the gun runner, sired by Vino Rosso, trained by Keith DeSormo. Uh, he did secure his maiden win back in November at Fairgrounds, but not a play. I don't think this one is ready for the next level, so to speak. So we're going to go on to number nine, Real Men Violin. Eighth place in the Risen Star for trainer Kenny McPeak. Ran into some traffic around the turn, was on the inside, and looked like he was going to move forward, but then got shuffled back and then was able to get up through the rail but could improve his second off the layoff and did, by the way, run down track Phantom at Churchill Downs back in October. Uh, so I think might be kind of a live long shot at the, I believe, 20 to 1 real men violin. 
Number 10 is common defense and uh, entered for tr trainer uh, Kenny McPeak. Second in the Rebel uh, behind Timberlake at an impressive 27-1 odds. Uh, but it was kind of a ground-saving trip. I don't want to be deceptive on, on how he got there because he ran the race he should have run. He saved ground on the inside and got the inside rail and closed well and, and deservedly so. But I don't know that it, at this outside post he's going to have any chance to do any kind of ground saving or any take advantage. This one I do believe is going to need something like ground saving trip, good trip, everything kind of go right kind of thing. So uh, I think a cut below, probably passing there. Number 11 is an interesting one, Tuscan Gold. Chad Brown Colt making his third career start in the Louisiana Derby. Maiden win in January at Gulfstream was a wow moment for me. Very impressive. Uh, I didn't show you the break, but he was bumped and jostled and got caught five to six wide in the first turn. Then he rallied up toward the lead uh, by the halfway mark and aggressively ran down an even money favorite, skipped the line, Todd Pletcher Colt, uh, to win by four lengths. I was really impressed by that. So uh, I think this horse has got uh, some chops and uh, we will be eagerly looking for Tuscan gold as maybe kind of a sleeper, but it's probably going to get, I think it was eight to one. Uh, so probably going to get some play at the window, regardless being a Chad Brown trained Colt. Now our main event, number 12 track phantom is your three to one favorite does once again, draw the outer post. But his speed, and like I mentioned in the last race, if you watch all his breaks from, from the gate, he breaks so quickly, it negates any bad positioning that he may get in this race. He'll go right out to the lead. He's done it all at fairgrounds, on fast, on sloppy, running virtually the same race every time. He blasts out to the lead. Then he'll sit down and try to set some reasonable fractions, and then he'll hold on down the stretch which he was unable to do, unfortunately. Sierra Leone ran him down. But he he did everything right in that race. So if he repeats that performance, they're all going to be chasing him once again in the stretch. So to sum things up, not much else to say, but Track Phantom is the one to beat. But I ask you this, what odds do you start looking elsewhere? Is When he gets down under even money, I don't think he'll get – it's going to be close. Even money, six to five. I think there's enough good horses in this race with the catching freedoms of the world, uh, Agate Road and the top trainers, that it will pull enough money. And maybe just people are getting tired of seeing Track Phantom up on the top of the leaderboard and try to beat him. So we'll see. Obviously, pace is going to dictate. But the other top two choices besides, the, besides Track Phantom is obviously catching freedom. I mentioned already, I, I, I also like Agate Road. Uh, so I think if the pace is reasonable, I still think catching freedom can do it either way. Track Phantom can wire the field if he can get down there and set like a 49 and change to a 50 half. He does that. It's going to be really difficult to catch him in the stretch. But if it's more like a 47 and change half mile, catching freedom and for sure Agate Road are going to be having a decent chance to get that win. But like I said, even if the pace is – uh not on the ultra slow, but slower catching freedom, I think can close it. If Agate road can get more forwardly placed, I think he can do the same. Uh, and I think one of these races, he's going to get that proper setup for his close. He could be sitting on a big one for this race. Like I said, 11 Tuscan goal is interesting. His maiden win was very convincing after spotting an even money favorite several links early on in the race and then ran him down to win by four. Seven Honor Marie is another interesting one, has a pot potential to clean up the mess and collect him a check at the end with some valuable derby points on the line. Uh, distant sustained closer, and I think the added distance, the extra 16th of a mile, could help. Uh, so basically, these are my early leans for Louisiana Derby. Once I study up and the past performances come out, I'm going to have a better understanding of pace and, and what I can try to do with the other contenders. So be on the lookout for a lot more content coming. We got the Jeff Ruby coming up. I got a special Japan Road to the Kentucky Derby video that I'm going to do, highlighting three or four uh, top Japanese contenders. So be on the lookout for that. And until the next time, we will see you soon. Thanks for watching.